I'm Stuart Reed from Foreign Affairs Magazine, and I'm joined today by Brian Warshe, an analyst at Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Brian, you've written an article on something that we use every day and we all take for granted, that is the electrical grid. How old is it? Well, the U.S. power grid was first constructed in the late 1800s, um, started by Thomas Edison. But most of the infrastructure that we use today um, hasn't changed much since then. In fact, a, a, almost nearly 80% of the infrastructure on the U.S. power grid today um, was built 30, 40, 50 years ago. And is that a problem? Yes, it is a problem. Um, and we need to modernize the grid. The U.S. power grid is old and it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable to natural disasters, such as when um, the East Coast here experienced uh, Hurricane Sandy a few years ago. And it's uh, increasingly vulnerable to the increasing penetration of renewable energy um, on the system, uh, namely wind and solar power. So explain that to me. Why are wind and solar power so problematic when it comes to integrating them into the current grid? Well, the wind does not always blow and the sun does not always shine. And this is a different paradigm than the way utilities um, have operated the grid for the last century. Um, traditionally, most of our power generation comes from fossil fuel power plants that can be turned on and off um, on an as-needed basis. Uh, with the increase in wind and solar power on the grid, uh, power uh, operators or utility operators actually have to control and flex, um, ramping up and down fossil fuel power plants uh, to accommodate for the um, often unpredictable uh, power supply coming from wind and solar power plants. And, and why is that a problem? So it, it's an issue because the grid ends up becoming significantly oversized and therefore inefficient. What power grids are designed for is to meet peak demand. And peak demand is basically what happens on a hot summer day in the Northeast when everybody turns on their air conditioning. It's the, the point of the day when the most power output is required by by customers, by you and me. The, over the last few decades, the peakiness on the grid, and we measure peakiness by taking the um, ratio of the highest peak demand uh, to the average demand on the grid, um, that ratio has actually been increasing noticeably over the last 20 or 30 years and is expected to continue to increase over the next few years. Now this has happened for a few reasons. Um, one has been the increase in um, the abundance of air conditioning uh, throughout the country. Um, certainly uh, means that more people can turn on air conditioning at all at about the same time. There's also an increasing penetration of renewable energy, which we've talked about. And also energy efficiency has played a role, bringing down the average demand um, overall as we have more efficient appliances, but not necessarily impacting that peak demand that occurs on those worst days. Um, and the last contributing factor is really climate change. Um, as weather patterns and temperatures get more and more extreme, the extremely hot and the extremely cold days end up driving the most significant peaks that utilities have to manage. What are some sorts of fixes and innovations that could change the way the grid operates and uh, fix some of these problems you're talking about. So, so one of the big innovations that's happened is, is largely encompassed under the, the term smart grid. What this really means is that um, utilities will have greater insight into the way the grid is operating on a real-time basis. The way the grid was traditionally designed was that electricity would flow from a centralized power plant down to customers. And even when uh, a power line would get knocked down, the utility might not even know that until a customer actually calls them up on the phone and says there's, there's a power line down. What um, the smart grid does, it's mainly, uh, the technology is mainly sensors and communication devices that allow the utility to see in real time, um, in real operation, um, in an operational strategy, where and at what status level all of its grid assets are. So that includes power lines, that includes customers' homes, what they're, they're uh, real-time usage is, and also other grid infrastructure um, along the grid. And, and they're also gaining the ability to change what rate of electricity a user pays depending on the time, right? Correct. So one of the other innovations that uh, utilities are looking to take advantage of is called time of use pricing. Uh, currently, uh, residential customers pay a flat rate for electricity at any time of the day whenever they use it. What the time of use pricing approach is, is to have different pricing for electricity used at different times of day. So there's electricity rate called the peak rate, which would be during that time period of day when the utility expects peak demand to be highest, and an off-peak rate. What this does is provides an economic incentive for customers to shift their behavior and shift demand from the electricity grid to better manage um, electricity 
for the utility. So running their dishwasher at night, for instance. Absolutely right. All right, Brian, so tomorrow you wake up and you've gained dictatorial powers and uh, an infinite budget to do whatever you want with for the U.S. electrical grid. What would be your priorities? I would, first off, continue to facilitate the deployment of renewable energy technologies, especially wind and solar, despite some of the issues on the grid that they cause. Now, to manage those issues, um, there's a couple ways to, to do it. Uh, one is economic incentives and, and the other is technological. So I think the economic incentives that I would put into place would be to incorporate things like time of use pricing, um, demand response, which is paying large end users, large commercial industrial customers to lower demand during these times of, of peak demand. And I would also look into technologies such as large-scale energy storage, uh, namely batteries. Uh, by deploying these throughout the grid, they can help buffer the unpredictability and uncertainty associated with a large penetration of wind and solar power. Brian Warshay, thanks for joining me. Brian is the author of Upgrading the Grid in the March-April issue of Foreign Affairs. Check it out.